In this video, I will show you how to create three overlays, dirty, cinematic, and retro. Normal text and normal footage can be quite boring. And if you put a cool overlay over it and you know how to do that, then that can really spice up your edit. And if you want this template and all of the project files of all of my tutorials, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. In this editing community, you will get all the project files, but you will also get a lot of deep dives and lessons on advanced editing techniques. Not only that, you will also learn how to get clients and get to the two to 5K a month mark. And there's even more, so do check out the link in the description and then let's jump into it. I'm here in After Effects. I'm just gonna create a new composition, 4K, 25 frames per second. Press OK. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna create a text by clicking on the text tool and then just clicking here. And then we can type in texture overlays. Let's just quickly center that using the align tool. Perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the left top. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna rename this to dirty. Then press Command D or Control D on Windows to duplicate this. Let's call this cinematic and duplicate it once more and we'll call this retro. And that's just easy later on. Let's start with the dirty. Now let's first import two files, dirt and dots. We can just drag them in, extract them in the footage. Now, if you're not in the pro community, that's totally fine. You can still follow along with this tutorial by joining the free club. In there, there's a link to the assets so you can still follow along. Now I first want to animate this dirt and there's multiple ways to do this. The method I'm gonna use is with keyframes and a simple expression. So I'm just gonna set a keyframe for the rotation. So press R for rotation to see rotation. Then set a keyframe, go a bit further, and then for example, twist it to like something else. Then let's go a bit further, twist it to something else, then twist it to another value, and then let's end it back to zero. So let's just type that in, zero, perfect. Now select all of the keyframes, right click, toggle hold keyframe. This will make sure there's no animation between it. It will just flip around and like stick to these values. Now, as you can see, it will stop. Uh, of course, we can copy these keyframes and paste them a couple of times, but we can also hold Alt, click on the stopwatch and type in loop out. That's it. And this will make sure it will infinitely continue to do this. That's cool. Now, as you can see, it won't fill the whole screen and there's an easy fix for that. We can just go to effects and presets and type in motion tile click on motion tab, double click on it. And then for the output width, we can just type in, for example, 300 and the output height also 300. And this is exactly what we want. We can now just go to toggle switches and modes, go to mode and change this to overlay. Now, what we can already do is turn the dots off for a second. And let's just quickly go to layer, new, solid, and add a dark background to this, somewhere like this, it's okay. Okay, and let's drag this under this. And as you can see, this already looks super, super cool. Now I already love this texture, but we're gonna make it even more dirty. Now we still have the dots and we can actually do the same thing with this, but I'm actually gonna do something different. I'm gonna go to layer, new, solid. I'm just gonna make this white so we can see what we're doing here. Press okay. Now I'm gonna add a turbulent noise to this and let's just change the fractal type to swirly, the noise type to spline. Let's increase the contrast a bit. So it's nice and black and white. That's what we want. Then I'm gonna decrease the brightness. So we will basically just have some white spots here and there. And let's open the transform. And then I'm just gonna drag this scale up really high just so we see these really cool patterns. And you can play a bit with this. You can set it to around 2000 or 3000. It doesn't have to be perfect. Almost looks a bit like the Northern Lights. Now I also want to animate this. And if we would normally animate the evolution, it will just be really smooth, which is actually also a really cool effect, but not effect what we want. We want to have a dirty effect. So I'm just gonna set a keyframe for the evolution, press U to see the keyframes. And we're just gonna do the same trick that we did with the dirt. So we're gonna go a bit further and now just set the evolution, for example, to six. Then we'll set it to three. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but just so there's a different almost map every time. And if you're not happy with the effect, you can always set it to something else like nine and just see what it looks like. No, maybe 10. Yeah, that looks cool, looks cool. Okay, cool. And then again, the last one, we'll just set back to zero. Let's select them all, right click, toggle, hold keyframe, same thing, and alt click on the stopwatch loop out there we go and as you can see it will have this really cool effect it will just continue until forever and if you want to have it quicker you can always select the keyframes hold alt and then drag them in or drag them out if you want them slower let's say we do it really quick and then you will see what happens it's a more like a quicker effect let's drag this out it will be a bit slower 
Cool. Now I might increase the complexity also a bit just to make it a bit more contrasty. As you can see, it will add a bit of detail to it. And now we're gonna do something really cool. We're gonna use this texture as a mat. So we still have the dots here and I'm just gonna go to track mat and use the white solid. Then click on the alpha mat icon to change it to luma mat. And let's now turn on the dots. And as you can see, the dot pattern will have the same texture as we created. Really, really cool in my opinion. Let's rotate the dots by pressing R and let's set this to 90 degrees. Let's press S for scale and let's scale these dot patterns a bit. Or if you want to have them a bit smaller, we can also scale them down and add a motion tell. Then output width, probably 150 would be enough. There we go. And look how cool this effect already looks. Now we can keep it like this or we can also change the blending mode. For example, we can change it to add to make it even lighter or we can change it to subtract, in which case it will be a bit of a dark theme as you can see. If we zoom in really well, you can see these dots pop up. And this will also go on our text. Uh, we can also go into the text and change the text color a bit. For example, if we make it a bit more off-white, okay, then we can see the texture a bit better. Now just quickly imported a image. And as you can see, this is also a really cool effect. We'll add this really grungy texture to this. The cool thing is, is that you can customize this and that every effect looks different. Really, really dope in my opinion. Now let's go to the next one and that is cinematic. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a subtle glow to this text. And of course you can use deep glow, but you can also just add a normal glow to this. Double click on it. I'm gonna show you a quick secret. You can almost make it look like deep glow by just changing the glow intensity to comma two and the glow radius to 15. Then duplicate this effect by pressing Command D or Control D on Windows. Set the glow radius to 30. Let's do this again. Then set it to 45. And let's do this again. And then set the glow radius to 60. And as you can see, you get this really nice subtle glow. It looks super, super cool. Now this will already make it a bit cinematic, but we're gonna add a cool film grain and also some film noise. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a background layer first. So let's go to layer, new solid and i'm just gonna use a dark grayish almost black something like this it's okay let's drop this below the text and then let's go to layer new adjustment layer now i'm just gonna add a simple noise effect to this set the amount of noise to 10 percent maybe even higher 20 percent let's turn the use color noise off and if we zoom in we get this really nice noise effect now if you want to have it a bit more softer you can actually add a gaussian blur to this uh, just adding this by dragging it in and setting this to 1.5 or maybe even two will soften that a bit. It will automatically be animated, which is really nice. I'm gonna go to layer new solid, set that to black, press okay. Let's go to the rounded rectangle tool. And if you can't see this, click on this, hold your mouse down and click on the rounded rectangle tool. And then I'm just gonna drag this out. So we have a cool border, just like this. Let's set this mask to subtract and also press F to feather this a bit, maybe with five pixels. There we go. And basically those are the little dirts that pop up in the screen. You maybe have seen them. And I'm gonna do that by just creating a couple of shapes. It's really easy. Just using the pen tool, setting the stroke to one pixel and white. And then we can just draw a simple shape, something like this. And it needs to feel a bit random. Then just hold Alt. This will make sure that the shape is only in the screen for one frame. Basically, if you would play this now, you will see that it will pop up a small, really quick, cool little spec. We can also add a Gaussian blur to this. Maybe it's a bit too sharp now. Let's do that quickly. Let's go to the effects and presets. We still have it here, Gaussian blur. And let's set this maybe to three. That works, perfect. And now we can just duplicate this and then of course move this a bit further and also moving it around. We can also press R for rotation to move it a bit. And then we can go a bit further. We can duplicate this by pressing Command D, moving this again and let's go a bit here. Then go to the pen tool and let's just draw a different shape. Maybe something like this. There we go. Like I said, it needs to feel a bit random, right? Now go into the shape and let's delete this one so we don't have two of those. That already works. There we go. Sometimes just a spec that just pops up real quick. You almost can't see it. Let's duplicate this one and let's go a bit further. Press R for rotation. Let's rotate this a bit. We can move it here. It just needs to feel random. And then once you're done with it, you can actually select all of these, collapse them. And then of course, Command D 
and just move them a bit somewhere like this and now we can do the same thing select all of them command d moving them to the right it almost looks like a music chart cool and now of course you can select all of them and hit command shift c to recompose this and we can call this film specs i think we looped it around here maybe hold alt right bracket to cut it off and then we can duplicate it we can just it could run a couple times. Now what's super cool about this is you're creating something custom that no one else has. You're building your own assets for your client or for yourself. That's also how you create a style. That's also how you customize things. So I think it's a really valuable skill to have. Now the last one is retro and I'm really excited for this one. Again, you can use this with any image. I'm not using a boring text, but that makes it even cooler if you use an image. Now I'm first gonna import this really cool pixel grid. And this might be a bit messy with your eyes. If we zoom in, we can literally see pixels on the screen. And we're actually gonna use this for our texture so let's drag this below and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pre-compose the texture overlays and this is also the time let's say you have a video here or you have an image here or you have your animation you basically want that in one cup so let's say we go to layer new solid and again create a dark gray background something like this and press ok we move that below the text then we need to select these two go to layer pre-compose or hit command shift c Control shift c on windows then we can just call this footage now this is really important because we're going to split the channels maybe you know of rgb red green blue normal screens consist of these three colors so i'm just going to hit enter and call this r i'm going to click on the layer and i'm going to add the effect and i'm going to add the effect shift channels and i'm also going to add the effect set matte let's click on that and then it's quite simple take red from red that's cool and just make sure that the green is full off and the take blue is also full off then use the set matte take matte from small.png and use for matte red channel now you can actually turn this pixel grid off and you can see already the effect popping up so we'll just take the red channel and as you can see, this is already a really, really cool effect. Now we just have to duplicate this. You can call this G from green and just do the same thing. Just take red, we'll set that off. Take green from green and then use for matte green channel. There we go. Now let's do that again. And now call this B for blue. And again, set the green to full off and the blue to blue and use the matte for the blue channel. Now this is already creating a really cool RGB effect, but we're definitely not done here. This is a cool effect, but it is really rough. And I basically want to soften it a bit that makes it a bit more retro. So I'm just gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer, and let's hit enter and call this soften. I'm gonna add a simple Gaussian blur to this. Let's set this to maybe something like four or five. Uh, this will already make it a bit more blurry. Then I'm gonna add a glow to this. A normal glow is fine. Now we're gonna do somewhat the same thing as we did before. Let's set this to five, duplicate this. Let's set this to 10. Let's set the glow radius to five, the threshold a bit higher. Then duplicate this, set the glow radius to 10 and duplicate it again by pressing Command D or Control D on Windows, set it to 15. And then maybe once more and let's set it to then 30. Now this looks so much better if you now turn it off and on, as you can see, the white will pop up more. It really looks like you're looking through a old TV. Now we can actually make it a bit more visible. As you can see, it's still a bit dark. It's just adding a brightness and contrast or maybe a curves. We can just drag the highlights up, something like this. And if you turn this off and on, as you can see, let's make it pop even a bit more. Now, of course, we can also add a border to this. And if you add an image to this, you will see how cool this will look. Let's say we go into the footage now and add the image we added before. Let's go back to our retro. As you can see, it's such a cool effect, right? Let's turn the opacity down a bit, something like this. And let's go back to the retro. And then you get something like this. You can add this to AI images, but also spice up some boring text animations or some boring icon animations. And like I said, you can customize it and make it really your own. Now, again, if you want to learn even more advanced editing techniques and you want this project file, then do join the Social Creative Club Pro. There's tons of advanced deep dives, an amazing community of editors that all want to help out. I post potential clients in there. You get access to the editing challenge and a lot, lot more. Do check it out. Link is in the description. Of course, do let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.